Welcome back to this fantastic session that we're going to run through now and it's called Include Everyone But Innovate. What does that even mean? Now, over the last three days, we've spent a lot of time talking about sustainability and this is, I think, a really fresh approach to what we mean by innovation. Uh, sessions are going to be a joint session with Guy Utley, a good friend of Creative Digital Industries. Uh, he's the founder and creative director of the tall group so cool because as you can see he's quite a tall guy at six foot three and uh, i think he thinks now he's been caught up by lots of other people but it's still a great name a great business and he's introducing to us andrew larkin the head of design at vanquished bank who's got a great track record in product and design teams creating design systems pattern libraries design processes complex the whole shebang and what they're saying is that the two things that you can guarantee, you won't know everything about your customer and you're likely not to deliver anything near what they expect, especially if it's a large business. So they're going to give us an insightful talk, uh, covers our journey, discovery, new insight, looking beyond what you know, and to answer the question, what inclusivity and innovation actually mean? I'm looking forward to it. Guy, Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, hi, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the VMC day, um, and I hope we don't disappoint right now. We're live on air, Andrew, so don't swear. Um, so, uh, yeah, so thank you for the introduction, Robert. Um, there's myself and Andrew, uh, who's travelled up from Kent this morning. Um, we'll start off by saying we're different. We're, we're both in as far as we're both white males, but Andrew has got to sit on a tall stool and I'm on a short stool because we're very different. There's lots of other ways we're very different and that'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, soon. So yeah, this is Andrew, I'm Guy, and, and we're talking about Here Comes Everybody. How do we include everybody and still be innovative? Um, we've, got to, we've got to look at a number of top, topics. Um, some of these are things that we consider all the time hot topics and some of them are brand new to, to des some designers and, and there are challenges and the difficult challenges it's tough right it's it's it's, it's, it's complicated it's scary um, and it can be time consuming how do we manage to get all these key points in inclusivity diversity look after more people innovate whilst still be, being sustainable um, and we're going to show you a couple of case studies later on and, and give away some free tools that we're using to help us um, with the bottom bullet. So we'll start with everybody's different. You are a unique snowflake. Um, and the unique snowflakes are becoming, there's more and more of you, and there's more and more people that we as designers and creators have to think about and consider. Um, the bigger their expectations, there's more digital systems, more digital products, people using them in different ways. So combine all this, more people, more digital products, it becomes quite tricky. Um, digging into the research, we found out quite quickly that um, it became really obvious. Uh, people are complicated. Nobody, nobody is the same as anybody else. Um, and as designers, we've, we've, uh, you know, we've grown into a, our field, working alongside personas and customer groups, demographics, et cetera. But what, have we, what we found um, that these groups can be dangerous, um, at best, if your research, if you research more and talk to customers, you know, you'll find out more about them. And that's exactly what we started to do. And um, we stopped using the basic personas that we always get, the five, six personas. And we started to really dig down and ask our customers and learn from those customers. Um, so if you keep going, you'll end up <laughs> what you call um, people, right? So this comes into everything from you know, you look at all types of different diversity. So you've got age, um, we've got gender, ethnic backgrounds. Um, what was the one? The accessibility. the accessibility side of it. So even even if if you, you know if someone's put down as deaf, there's different levels of, of deafness. You know how how somebody um, how someone's treated in that category can be very different. There's different levels. Some people are completely deaf. Some people are hard of hearing. Some people are going through that journey. So we can't even just categorize death as one, 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 one type of person. 
So dig digital today, investment in digital is huge. Um, massive, more and more people signing up. Um, everything is becoming more and more technical and messy, but people are staying the same. So I'm going to throw a few stats here, and I'm going to read them off the screen because I've forgotten half of them already. <laughs> so 54% uh, of all technical spending globally is being used to digitize services. 89% of all companies globally have a digital first proposition. Since December 2020, we've seen adoption of digital services by the general public grow by 28%. More than three years worth of growth in under just 12 months. And yet, 60, uh, 76% of CEOs surveyed said that growing digital complexity may soon make it impossible to efficiently manage digital performance. Quite a scary stat. Only 16% of employees think digital transformation has improved their experience. And 88% of customers interviews, interviewed said digital services were too complex. So more people using more digital services, complex networks, network systems, more tech, more complexity, more people, and then oh, they're all staying the same. So that's our challenge. It's scary, it's a pain, it's something we've got to deal with. But bringing it into today's topic, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very big task and it takes lots of people, lots of effort, which means lots of cost um, and everything just gets bigger and it can't be sustainable to, to grow like that. So we've got to get smarter. We've got to, we've got to find ways of being more efficient to deal with it. And, and that is where I'm going to bring Andrew in. He's going to tell us how we've been trying to do that. Thanks. <laughs> Can you go to the next one, please? Yeah. So I'm going to start off by saying that this is a bit of a caveat, which is we are on the journey to doing this, and we haven't arrived at the destination. So it, what I'm going to tell you is what we've been doing, how we've been doing it. The guy said we're going to give away some freebies at the end to help you do it. Um, but some of this may change, so come back in 12 months when we're doing this next year, and we may kind of update it. So I am from Bankwis. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll be your Carol Vardaman. You can be Carol Vardaman. Uh, bank, this is a bank, right? So we offer all of the um, services the banks offer. And part of those services are support channels. Um, primarily, we've been, uh, our support channels have been call centres, right? Um, because call centres offer very good experience for our customers. But as we grow as a bank, and we're growing quite quickly, it isn't sort of sustainable to grow those call center numbers to meet the additional number of customers that we're getting. Um, so like pretty much everybody else, we've been investing very, very heavily in digital channels. This is apps, website, um, you know, voice systems, SMS, chatbots, all of it. Um, now, as a, as, a, as a team, in order to sort of make sure that we're supporting the needs of our customers, our design team does a huge amount of research. We speak with our customers almost every week. Um, and these are in-depth interviews, these are not little surveys where we get them and we sit in front of them or because of COVID we're at the moment. And we spend you know, a long time really getting to know them on their journeys. And what we found is really interesting, which is that we're seeing, Guy spoke earlier about there's more people using more digital channels. Um, and we're seeing the same thing, which is, which is the uptake in digital is huge but we're starting to see gaps in the quality of service that we provide. And we've always been thinking, we've always approached it as feature gaps. Right? So when people say, I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that, we try and tackle that by adding a feature. And you see almost everybody tackle things this way, or throw a new feature. But what we've been finding by doing these interviews is that it's not a feature gap problem. It's that we're finding more and more people have a level of discomfort using our services which are not solved by other new features. And that's been really interesting. What is that? Next one, please. Um, now, this is an, uh, an example of how we kind of meet the needs of different people. This is one screen in our new app. You're seeing this kind of before it's been launched, so here we go. Don't screenshot it. <laughs> don't, don't screenshot it, although we've, you know, we've published it. Um, this, is, this is one screen. And we have to design for what we call the majority, most people. We have to design for people with dyslexia, so we support different fonts and font scaling, we support dark mode, um, we support voiceover content, and when, when you turn voiceover on on this app, it will actually change the content that we present 
because when we say something to somebody, when we speak to you, it's different content and how you want to read it. And that means that the content hierarchy has to change. So this is just one screen that's got dozens of different user interfaces. And that has to scale across the over 3,000 different devices that our customers use to gain access to this app. So the challenge is it's scary, it's intimidating, and this is just at the UI level. I haven't spoken about UX, I haven't spoken about content strategy or those other bits and pieces. Even just at the UI level, the challenge is very difficult. So what have we been doing to meet, you know, meet that need to grow our digital sort of services in a sustainable way, a financially sustainable way? I think we need to point out that what we're saying is we can't use the traditional design methods to be able to accommodate that type of no, they don't UX journey. Yeah, they don't work. Because you're going to have to have 10 times as many as designers to even scratch the surface. The way that you, the way that you do it traditionally is um, you do an interview and you go, oh, we need to do another design. We try another design. We need to do another design. And what we're finding is, is that the needs of customers have become so extreme, so diverse as, you know, as we interview them, that that, that that old way does not work anymore. So that brings us neatly on to Stitch. First time we're showing this, lovely logo, thank you. Um, Stitch is the name of our new design system. Uh, Stitch is a design system which is based around what we call fluid customization at the granular level. Um, so instead of pages, we have a library of widgets. Uh, if you've you know, got Android or iOS, then you would have seen widgets, right? So we, this is, you know, we weren't geniuses, we didn't come up with this. Um, we, have, we offer our customers a library of widgets, and these individual widgets adapt to the needs of the customer and the device that they're using. So if we know that a customer um, has a certain type of dyslexia, then the widgets will update. And depending on the device they're using, the UI will, will, uh, will update itself. And then we can apply different sort of combinations of these widgets in order to give the customers what they need for the specific products that they've got, and they also get to sort of customize the interface themselves because some people may be paying off a credit card so all they care about is when the balance is. Some people use their credit card every day, therefore they need a lot more information. So all of the widgets scale in terms of the information that they show, which people are scaling how large they are in the content hierarchy, all these things adapt. Um, the, the difficulty with this is because this is great from a design point of view, but how do you get this into development? How do you Widgets can be expensive to develop, right? And we're sort of consistent in building new ones. How do you get this into development in a sustainable way? That leads us on to this awesome thing which we've discovered called design Sounds tokens. Okay. If you don't know about design tokens, you should really uh, Google them, but look them up because they're a, they a massive change for how we go about doing design to develop a handoff. It's getting the designers and developers working. This is how we take non-sustainable plans to sustainable because it's going to speed up everything absolutely everything it is, it's amazing yeah. this is going to give you help okay? so, <laughs> so so design tokens each of these little things which i'm hoping you can't see my hand but you know each of these things are, are what we call design tokens so every single piece um, of aesthetic on a design is given a name and it's got a value so this can be the type of shadow you're using, how you construct the shadow, your border radiuses, your colors, your grid systems, literally everything on the screen that you can see and touch, how fast things move, how they sound, all of it is given a unique name and a value pair. We create this in our design tool. Uh, we use Figma, but you can do this in Sketch as well. And once we've created these design tokens, we can export them as JSON. JSON is just a markup language, it's just plain text language that all developers understand and you know, use pretty much every day. And all of our digital channels can ingest that, which means that our new mobile app, our new website, our new email platform, our social media platforms ingest these tokens, which means that we can adapt the, our design system, how our design system works, the content that's in it, how we display things to the customers. And all we've got to do is publish an adjacent file and all of our channels will update. And it can literally happen like that if you want it to. We slow it down because we're a bank, we've got audit processes. But that's what we have to do, which means that as we, if we interview customers and we find a new pattern, we can make that pattern in the design system and push out an update. And you don't need any developer involvement. And they're varying accessible levels. 
So, yeah. so we'll use like the um, example of the blindness and, and people having varying, various different levels of that. We can customize that for those three different people, sir. Exactly. So you can have a token system, a page, which is for what we you know, call the majority most people. But then if somebody says in the app, I want larger scaling of this font, or I want a different font or whatever, the app just chooses to read from a different JSON format and the whole thing updates. So we have tokens for all the different types of what we call vulnerabilities for vulnerable customers. And um, the, another thing that makes it really good is that we can mix and match those things. So if you've got somebody that, that uh, is dyslexic and wants a certain typeface, but they also want font scaling and they uh, want color blindness being turned on, for example, what we can do is we can we can mix and match those different design tokens to meet the needs of those individual customers, which is completely impossible to do in a standard way. Like right? you have to have a thousand themes. It's something. not impossible. It's just not sustainable <laughs> because you're going to have you're going to have you're going to have so many designers and so many user journeys with so many different sets of widgets. It would just turn into an absolute beast and a monster to, to try and control. Whereas this is all done in a nice, neat style. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing. Right. So then the question is, once you've got that working. Next. Yeah. Oh, I made a preview. Let's just go on right. So we've now got two questions. The first one is, how do we gather the research needed to do this? And then how do we sell those ideas into the business? These are the two big things that we've faced as, a, as challenges at Bankless, right? Okay. So the first one, how do you, how do, you do the research? You've got to talk to your customers. There's no um, easy way out. You've, you've got to do your customer research. Um, you'll probably Oops. already have personas. Um, the, the issue with that I personally find, um, and feel free to challenge me on this, but the issue I find with classic persona type is that you will not get anybody to empathize with that customer because they see through it, because it's, it's ultimately the fictitious person that's made up. It's a generalization. So instead of doing that, we don't use those types of personas, we do these types of personas. These are real stories of individual customers. They, they, they are much more expensive to produce because you've got to spend more time talking to the customers, but you get much more value out of them. And we found that we can put these in front of anybody at the business and they will immediately empathize and understand the challenge that that person has. So this is not edited. This is, you know, we change the name, we change the photo for obvious reasons, but everything in the persona is is exactly what the customer said when we went through the interviews with him. If you've never uh, created these types of personas, and if you've never done um, customer research or customer interviews, it can be quite daunting. So we have written up a guide, and we are giving away our, a, a batch of what we call vulnerable customer personas. The first nine personas are live. So if you go onto the Figma community, it is only on the Figma community, but if you want it, then just get in touch with us and we can send it to you the PDF. If you go into the Figma community and search for Vanquist, these are live now and you can go and download them. Once you've done that, uh, and you've got your personas, and you, and you never stop generating them, by the way, you keep interviewing week in, week out, yeah. and you keep finding new stuff. When you find something that's valuable, create that persona. Um, once you've done that, you then need a way to find the gaps between what your customers expect of you and what you're delivering because I guarantee that what you're delivering is not what your customers need. You're probably miles away. We were way off. So the way that we've been um, figuring that out is we've created this tool, which we call an inclusive thinking audit. It's four workshops, it's very intense, but it's gold, it's stuff you get out of it. And, um, it, it, it would be hard to find any other way. Um, so the, these, are, these are workshops. They're designed to help your business understand, as I said, the gap between what you're offering and what you're and they help you evidence it uh, in a way that gets the business to buy in. Um, then, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yes, they're powerful at uh, uncovering the gaps, but they're also, as you can see uh, now, I think you can see it, they kind of show you the level of emotion and the sort of the psychology that's going on in your customers' heads at the key points in the journey. And that's the point where people often, um, it's often difficult to find what psychological state of different uh, Personas are going through in that journey. These workshops help you do that. And then once you've done it, once you've mapped out your journey and you've found those gaps, and you find UI gaps, you find UX that feel pretty simple, but you also find those kind of like 
behavioral gaps in the journey. Once you've done that, the great thing about these is they help you to distill it all down into a set of evidence deliverables, which are ready to go onto your product backlog. You do these workshops, this is key, you do these workshops with your product owners and with your support staff and with you know, high level stakeholders at different points in the business, you need to get business buy-in. The thing is, this is not just one two hour workshop, it's like four half day workshops. They really help you get that kind of buy-in. And with the personas, you get the empathy as well. If you've never done one of these, which is doubtful that you have, they're difficult to plan and manage. So we're giving this away as well. Again, if you go on to Figma, onto the Figma community, search for Vanquist, you'll see this. Uh, it's live now, you can download it. Both of the things that we're giving away uh, are constantly updated as we use them and find out sort of weaknesses in them. And we want the community to tell us where they're not working for you. We are a bank, um, so up, they are tailored around financial services, but they only need, they need like a little tweak to work with pretty much anything else. Um, and if you want to talk to us about how to use them, just get in touch, we're quite open to you. That's it. So that's it. Yeah. So um, any, any, actually, do you want to say anything before we open up? Um, yeah. So I think we, we, we touched on a couple of things. We, we didn't know how long it was going to take, and I think we've got, we've got five or ten minutes left. So one of the areas we, we kind of skimmed over, and, and maybe a question that some people have got is, how different is this from accessibility? Um, obviously, we've had this conversation a lot of times because we've had it in the business where they've gone, well, is that not just accessibility, right? In, is it inclusivity, accessibility, and what's the difference? So we've had to explain that quite a few times. Um, I think... Accessibility is still being written, um, but there's a lot of documentation already available. I think around the inclusivity side, when you do, we cannot find anything in terms of guidelines. So, yeah. I would, like, I, the way I call it is I say accessibility is a well-known science, um, and, and inclusive thinking and vulnerable customers, nobody's ever heard of the term, let alone done any work on it. Um, so th there were a few, there's a, a few businesses out there that are, that are guns blazing on it, uh, like we are, but, but we found almost nothing on it. Microsoft have got some stuff on it, Monzo got some stuff on it, we've got some stuff on it. But accessibility is very well understood. Uh, vulnerable customers, it's much more difficult. If, if you're asked to uh, create a website that works for uh, assistive digital technologies, there's loads of documentation. If you're asked to design a journey for, here's a real, real persona, we call her Mary. Uh, she has a uh, short-term memory loss, she lives somewhere where she has no access to internet, no mobile phone signal. She doesn't have regular money coming into her bank account. That's because that's not how her benefits get paid. Therefore, she can't set up a direct debit or credit card. So we have to figure out a way to build a journey for her. The way she's got, we can't send her any digital reminders because she's not going to remember how to pay. And she has to walk into town once a week to get any access to her app in order to make those payments. So she's got multiple vulnerabilities, right? There's, there's, there's no WCAG list out there which says what you do for people like Mary. Now, before we do all this work, if I said that to somebody, they'd say, Mary's an edge case. She's not. We've got 1,400 people like Mary, so she's not an edge case. Uh, every time uh, people say that, that somebody's an edge case, it's nonsense. It's just they're hidden in the data. So you can't, see, you can't find these people unless you do the work. Yeah. So it's different to accessibility. I think I think before working with Vanquist, you know, over two years ago, we we primarily made sure we ticked the boxes on the accessibility side of it, ensuring we had good user journeys. We checked the normal personas. Um, Vanquist Vanquist do have um, because they're in finance and the, the, the sector that they're in, they do have a lot of vulnerable customers. So not every brand we work with will have this level of vulnerable customers. Um, finance is obviously one that captures quite a lot of that. So I think if you can learn off the tools that Andrew has, has been able to share and use that, that's, that's the worst case scenario. That's looking at everybody in, in, in some real depth. Um, but it might be um, with your brand, you only need to do that at a certain level. Um, but yeah, it's been, an, it's been an eye opener working with Andrew on this. And like Andrew said, we're integrating that now, all that thinking into the design system, which is growing, which is, another six months of a ton of stuff we've got to fit into that and that's now going to be feeding down into the products that they're doing so it's really exciting and we're sharing it really quite early 
to the point we might even get us hand slapped or Andrew might do um, <laughs> for, for showing some of this stuff. So yeah, it's, it's been um, it's been good. Thank you, Andrew. So I suppose back to um, Robert. I don't know if there's any other questions. Wow, well, that's a highlight for the final day of the conference and something fresh, different, and I would expect something challenging from Guy. <laughs> I've got one really important question, which is how on earth do you convince the rest of the business that this is the way of working that we actually required? What was it, you repeat that? Could you repeat that, Robert? Yeah, how do you convince the rest of the business yeah so yeah so i mean you so we obviously this is something as a as a creative team we have a we've we've had it is a challenge especially and i mean I'm talking for andrew but obviously the, the bank is it's a big place with lots of levels of different people you're going to get people to buy in and sign off as designers you might understand it um you might get it quite quickly you understand widgets and tokens and you know that side of it excites us but to get true buy-in um, for the rest of the team you've got to look at the you've got to look at how this is valuable to the business so yes sustainability is going to be a key factor for lots of businesses um looking at the, making sure we're, we, we we're looking after the diverse um audience and and and, and um, answering the question the ux questions for everybody but again that's that's something that the design and ux teams are really passionate about i think really getting the attention of the business is where you can see we can speed this up look look how much faster we can do this we don't need to, to to double or quadruple the team to to look after this we can use these tools which makes us more efficient okay we might be doing ourselves out of a job one day but um i think that's that's the way to sell it into the business and i think that's where um I, you know i'm not going to take credit this is where andrew has had a lot of success by being able to show the business how efficient we can be so again um do do look at andrew's tools and see how you can fit them into into your process but you will be able to set the argument higher up the chain can i throw in something yeah. which is uh, the, the pessimist in me says um we're regulated so we don't have a choice we've got to do this right that's the pessimist in me but the the optimist in me says that uh, nobody nobody comes to work to be a pain in us they all want to do their best. You did so well. You got up to 25 minutes without that swearing. That isn't swearing. Right? Okay. So but they, they want to do uh, what's, what's right for the customer. Um, so if you show people, and you know, this is where you've got to use that cliche term, you've got to bring them on the journey. If you show people a way, if you evidence the size of the challenge, and then you show them a way out, yeah. of it, which is exciting, then, the, then that's how you get your right. Yeah. And if you, yeah, and then if you mess it up, you get fired. But you see, like, you're, 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 you're taking, the best way to describe it is you're bringing them on the journey with you, yeah. rather than just trying to show them an idea and, and getting the buy-in. You, you actually bring them on the journey from the beginning, yeah. from understanding the people, how we're going to understand the people better, and what we're going to do to facilitate that, and then improve how we do it, make it more efficient. Have you got to tell a story? Yes. A pitch, go on some pitch training. That's how we should, that's what we should have put tell in. The story. Tell the story. Yeah. So we tell the story, Robert. <laughs> you tell the story and you've taken us on the journey. I think just before I close with some sincere thanks, would you like to just repeat to us the very generous offer that you've given to get involved with what you're trying to do? Yeah, so if you go, uh, again at the moment, only if you're using the Figma, sorry to everyone that uses Adobe and Sketch, um, you go onto the Figma community and search for Banquist and our tools will come up. If you want them, and you're not using Figma, then get in touch with me via Guy or somebody. Leave just leave something, and we can we, we'll export yeah. them as PDFs or sketch files or whatever you want, and we'll send them to you. They're open source. Okay. Okay. Well, look, the, the way that we can do this is that we're going to send out some comms immediately after the conference, and we will include some joining instructions. So we'll finesse that with you when the when the messages go out. But. Um, Listen, I'm really grateful, guys. You, you, you've really brought something fresh to a debate that's been going on for three days. And, and some of the words are beginning to sound very repetitive. But the way you've talked about innovation in an innovative way, uh, you haven't disappointed. So I'm really grateful. Thank you both for joining us on Visual Media Conference, being a part of that journey and helping us on this last lap. Uh, stay with us. 
and uh, we'll circulate the information at the end of the conference. But thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.